All right, so we're going to learn how to do slap bass on uh, just funky slap stuff. So the first thing is we want to talk about the slap and how to do that. So what you want to do is, is you're going to take your first finger and you're going to curl it and you're going to go underneath the G string until you get to the end of the fingerboard, okay? And, th and you need to know where that, that actual, that thumb has to go, all right? You can't, it doesn't, I mean, some guys do slap back there, but it doesn't have as nice a sound as, as it does at this area. So you want your, your thumb to be around the last fret or the second last fret of your bass. Again, you want to take that first finger and go all the way to, with the G string and slide it all the way until you're, you can't go anymore and then have your thumb in this angle like this. All right. Uh, now, now, then what you do is you take your, your finger away and this is the basic position. This is one way to slap. There's many other ways, but one way is, some people do slap like this. I end up slapping like this. Now the motion is from the wrist. Okay, so you're gonna do the wrist. Also, you're basically slapping, when you slap, you're hitting where this joint is on your thumb. This is where you're hitting it. So you're gonna come by, and in, so you're gonna have that come in, you're going to go from the wrist, and then bounce right back, like you're touching a hot stove. You wouldn't sit there and go, oh, geez, is that a hot stove? But you would just, just come back very quickly. basically what you're doing there. Just going to go forward and then come back quickly. If you do that, you're going to, it's just going to, you're not going to get sound. So, you, and a lot of people think it's this, but it's not. You're, you're coming back and you're, you're hitting it. Now what's happening is the bottom of the string is hitting the fret and that's where it's getting a metallic sound and it's just bouncing back after you come back the tautness of the string. You can do the same thing on the A string. Same thing on the D string. And the G string. So I got E, A, there's another exercise you can do, just four, four hits. This is something you don't slap very often. You don't slap the G and the D very often. It does happen. But it doesn't always, it's not always happening like that. A lot of times it's got... You're probably just going E and A the most. D is second and G is not as much. Unless you're Marcus Miller and you slap everything. That guy's amazing. So again, four times on the E. Four times on the A. Try to be accurate. G four times. Go back up four times. Four times. A. E. Do it three times. Back up. Two times. So that's how to get the slap. It does take a while to get this happening where you're just coming in like this. So you notice I'm not doing that. It's not, it's not, I'm just holding it down. I'm coming back quickly. Okay. Now the next thing you want to talk about is the pop. And the pop is you curl your, your, your index finger, your right hand, and you basically you have it in this, this, uh, uh, this position here and you're just going to pop the string. So I'm gonna have this sound. So again, the motion is like this. Not holding it, not pushing it this much. Uh, just, just enough on the side, okay? And I'm just coming off of it like that. Now be careful when you first do this. If you do not have a blister on, or a blister, if you don't have a, 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 a callus on that first finger, you will get blisters, so do it you know, a little bit every day. So you get that callus on. 
Because if you stand up like I did when I was younger and I do it for five hours and I have this huge blister and keep on doing it, it hurts. So I wouldn't do that for only if that's what you want. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to just do octave. We're going to do an E octave. I'm going to play the open E string and then my first finger is going to play the second fret on the D string and that's those are both E's. So we got the open E string and the second fret on the D string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the thumb and I'm going to pop that D string again. This is a great exercise. Getting used to this. A lot of times you're going to play same thing, open A, then pop on the G string. So open A, and then the second finger will go on the G string, second fret, and that will also be an A. So we have thumb, So okay, so that's one exercise. You just sit there. cool exercise would be going open E, then the octave, F, and then the octave. I call these disco octaves. Uh, and then, so that would be the first fret for the octave, and then third fret on the D string, then the second fret, and then the fourth fret on the D string, and then the E string, third fret, and the fifth fret on the D string. So we have thick E string, sorry, first fret on the big thick E string, third fret, second fret on the E string, fourth fret, and then third fret, and then fifth fret. So, yeah. so you can do this exercise a number of ways. You can just play, you can do the, what is known as staccato short. What I'm doing is I'm going to stop, I'm stopping that with my left hand, these fingers, and I'm playing the, the the second fret, and I'm lifting it up right right away, so it gives me a staccato sound. A little bit tough at first. Then I'm going to go to the first fret, lift, push down on the first fret, and lift it up right away. Do the same thing for the third fret, and continue on. Nice. You can vary that staccato really short to a bit longer. down a string. So it's the same thing down a string side. If you ever think staccato. Again, these are called disco octaves you'd find here in the, the late 70s. Disco type songs. So it's a good one to start with. Uh, something else you can do is you can do legato. So you hold everything. Just hold it so it runs into each other. So you just, 